Do do do. Uh huh. Okay. One, two, three. Hey guys, welcome back to video number three on Arctic Cat 375 uh, Revival. Uh, I'm pretty excited about today. We're gonna hopefully we're gonna get the gas tank in, get it buttoned up, get it painted up, get it just cleaned up, whatever, everything, get it finished up today, hopefully, and uh, you know, see if we can actually ride this thing. It'll be the first time I've been able to ride it. I'm excited that it, it ran in the last video. Uh, if you haven't seen video two or one, just check them out. Pretty cool. Uh, but either way, thanks for uh, checking out the video and. Let's get after it. It's a little bit low light. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, I got. I just got the tank in. Uh, I was able to get the fuel gauge in, but it's a little. It's about a quarter of a tank off. Get some fuel down in there. See if you have any leaks. Uh, the other day when I did this, the overflow tube was pouring because of the, all the crap that was in the carb. So. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Well, the good news is she's running. Uh, I'm not really hearing any evidence of the rod knock. There's a little tick there. But again, I think that's the secondary clutch. Doesn't sound like a typical rod knock tap. It's very similar, but when I felt the case, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just guess hoping. But uh, this carb is really just a mess and I'm probably gonna need to go get another plug I'm hoping that'll clean it up a little bit so well it got a little bit better towards the end there um, still got some adjusting to do but so far so good we're making good progress Guys, forgive me for the wind. It's pretty bad out here, but I think it's time we give this thing a bath finally. Now that we got it running a little bit, so I'm gonna spray it down with uh, some pre-treatment and then hit it with the pressure washer. And then the last thing I'm gonna go back over with just soap and water. 
Let's get after it. That's certainly a little better. Um, so I'm going to come back with uh, you know soap and water. I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to hit it with the soap and water, and then get it rinsed off again with the pressure washer. And uh, I need to do those panels right over there as well. So I'm going to do that, and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding, painting, and then put it all back together. Guys, I got a uh, a new cable uh, for this thing, and um, pretty simple to get to. I'm just going to get the recoil out of the way because I got, actually got another one of these two. I just haven't put it up, put it on here because the starter has been working, or has been working. So I'm going to pull, I had to pull this off anyway. That's going to help me get a little better access to the cable. So yeah, that gives me really nice access to the cable here. And, uh, it's already loose um, it actually came loose pretty easy and since the cable that, that I have is already cut I uh, I'll show you I put the, uh, the cable on into my you know my drill here and see if that'll work to get it turning You may be able to see that. There it goes. Just like that, pops right out. All right. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, you got this little, looks like the head of a, a flat screw. And you just line that up with the grommet that's in here, inside the um, mechanism for the Speedo. And the easiest way to do that is to just turn turn this end right here. So if you'll notice, yeah, that's turning. And then you just line it up with uh, with what we got and screw the. Um, this fitting right here on and you're good to go let me do that right quick all right so you can see the uh, speedometer cables back in um, that doesn't have to be real tight just snug it up um, well, that seems to be the work be best way to do it honestly I use a pair of pliers probably again not the best way to do it but hey it works excuse me it worked so on to the next thing so here's my recoil Recondition recoil from Power Sports Nation, um, unit 27159. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Anyway, but uh, kind of cool. They, uh, it's the, you know, it's a used uh, cover, but all this inside, all the internals have been redone. Looks pretty nice. 
Oh, that looks nice and new, so cool. All right, that's good. That's on, nice and snug. All four, I was able to find four bolts for it. So we're good. Awesome. Oh yeah. Again, sorry about the wind, but you may have noticed I got the uh, rack painted up, um, sanded and painted uh, anything on it that had, you know, a little bit of rust on it. Um, got the front rack painted. So let's get those put back on. An attempt to do, I don't know what you'd call it, some plastic welding, but without a plastic welder. Um, I, I have to use a soldering iron. <laughs> Basically, I'm just moving some of the good plastic over into the where the crack is. Just trying to save this from getting any worse. So that one it doesn't look that great but it's on the bottom side so i really don't care but it is reinforced um you may recognize that black plastic from the uh, baja build we did so but it's on there pretty good really good and strong so very nice now i'm gonna i'm gonna do that one and that one and then we'll be done with the plastic welding and uh I might sand it up just a little bit. If I do, I'll uh, I'll video that right quick and then um, get it all put back together. It's not going to win any beauty contests, but all of this was cracked all through here. Now it's getting strong on both sides. I have not come back with the sandpaper yet, but I will. But uh, hey, that's a lot better and it's not gonna crack any worse. And then once I flip this over, you're not even gonna be able to tell really, except for the one little reinforcement I put over here. But beyond that, we're good to go. Awesome. Some progress, got the speedometer on. I uh, got this case, whatever you wanna call it, I don't even know. I got it on. Um, I got the front cover back together. Got these fenders screwed on properly. Got this on properly. Um, the plastic welding did pretty good. You can't actually really even tell hardly. You'd have to really be looking for it. But uh, that turned out pretty nice. So now it's time to get this on. So let's see if we can finagle this booger on here. All right, it's on. And this time, it's on good. Not like before where you could literally pull the whole thing off here. Looks a lot better with the uh, metal painted and sanded.
sanded and painted, whatever. But uh, hey, it's coming along pretty nice. I'm sure the wind is going to be kicking up like it always does, but check this out. Nice brand new carburetor. I could not get that other one to cooperate, so ta-da! So we're going to get this sucker put on. I got this, and I got a um, choke cable and a choke lever, and so I'm hoping once I get that in, it's going to run a lot better. Just could not seem to get that carb right, so let's dig in. So I got a Phillips head screw right here on this cover for the uh, throttle cable. Get that off. That should just come right off. There we go. Wow, that's really loose in there. It's a good thing I looked at that. So this carburetor's off. I want you to notice right here, that's where the choke went in. And they put some sort of sealer or something in here so that's not gonna it's not ever gonna be right so that and plus just all this green goo all this stuff I just could not get get a handle on that so as you can see the gas is actually still pretty clean going in the filter here but I don't know anyway so we're gonna get this other carburetor on here and see see how it behaves um, it was working, but that, it just kept choking out, you know, and I don't, I could not get this stuff out. So whatever that is, whatever this stuff is right here. So here we go. Now on this, the way to put the choke on, all right, in this case, this carb came with this, but the choke cable, the new one actually came with this as well. So you got insert and a spring and then if you'll notice right in there that little deal needs to come out once I messed with a little bit it slid right out and so anyway this is the new choke cable right here this is the end it's gonna go onto the choke lever and then this is the part that'll go in here all right, anyway, so that's going to go on like that. Your spring's going to go on there. This is going to go on like this, all right? And then you'll slide this in here. Carefully. All right, and then put your spring on top like so and then ideally you'll just tighten this right this right here and don't over tighten it because it, it'll break real easy all right got the throttle cables restrung right here and then I'm right now I'm just adjust getting this tightened up make sure there's no play in the throttle all right so I got the cover back on there the throttle cable snug have a good throttle here it is we got it in there this is in there like it's supposed to be and just routed the cable up through and then up to the handlebar ta-da so we're getting there this goes together like this and it goes on the handlebar like so the I went ahead and got a couple of different bolts uh, because the ones that were in here were corroded and I didn't want to risk putting them back on, so I went and you know got these. Hopefully these will work. Uh, they appear to be the same. So anyway, I'll get those in here. So 
what I figured out on this uh, choke cable is definitely don't hook up the bottom first. Um, you can't quite see. There you go. Don't hook up the the bottom first. Do the top. Um, it's going to be way too hard to thread to thread this like you want to. So let me go ahead and so what you're going to do is you're going to push this through right here and then on the other side and then you see that notch right there you're going to fit it into that notch all right guys so we basically we've got <coughs> the ignition switch all that put in um, I want to apologize I lost the footage of putting the choke uh, lever on here um, but you know long and short once you thread the throttle the choke cable into here it there's actually a groove where it fits into the this housing and then all you do is just screw it all together so that was the biggest thing but anyway i lost the footage of doing that so now it's time to see if she will crank the new carburetor oh yeah much much better Yeah, I couldn't do any of that before. So, much, much better. And she's idling. Huge improvement. Way past time to get this cover off. So, we're gonna flip it over, get all these staples out. You guys can see the front of this pad here is kind of chewed up so I went ahead and got an old life jacket that the kids have long outgrown and I took this pad here and I'm gonna see if I can make a piece to go on that point there like so give it a shot anyway ain't gonna hurt anything take just a little bit more off that but I want it to be scrunched up in there like so I don't know if you guys can see that I think that'll work funny thing doing this seat I was so intimidated by doing the cover on this seat that I almost didn't do it I almost didn't even finish the the uh, the four-wheeler because I was so intimidated by this but got the first staples in I got two two back here underneath obviously and then on the point I just wanted to make sure I got it lined up and then I'm just gonna continue working my way around the seat you know just continue working my way around the seat making sure it's nice and even but so far so good pretty happy with it. how about that that turned out pretty good nice and even that piece of foam worked good and I'm pretty happy with that. Nice and smooth, no ripples. Well, that's a big, big, big improvement. <laughs> Almost there, man. Just a little bit more to go. So more progress today. Um, I got this switch replaced with a waterproof switch. Um, cleaned up the wiring uh, for the switch. Um, it actually had two switches like this on it. And you can see the sorry kind of wiring that was on there. So now uh, I got the proper gauge wiring, got a waterproof switch, which is pretty nice. Uh, for the, These are for the KC lights. And uh, I think they turned out pretty good.
One, two, three. How about that for an after? I think it turned out pretty good. This one took a bit, but I think it was worth it. Got a lot of new parts, got a lot of wrenching. I think I probably could have fixed one or two of the cars by now, but I'm pretty happy with the results. I think it turned out pretty freaking good. So, I think it's time to go for a ride. Right, guys so that's gonna be it on the arctic cat build re, you know re whatever <laughs> rebuild um we're finally done with this thing i think it turned out pretty good uh thanks for sticking with me on this a pretty long video i'm sorry it went so long but you know i, I had to get it all done um this one really tested me i really kind of overcame some things uh some fears um you know with getting out there and just getting after it you know sometimes even i get a little intimidated by projects you wouldn't think so especially on one of these as many of them as i've done but uh anyway it turned out pretty good and i'm so glad you guys came and checked it out um if you liked the video hit the thumbs up maybe subscribe uh either way it's all good thanks again for coming and checking out the video